Ladies and gentlemen, in this video, we're going to be zeroing in on AMD's budget and mid-range offerings for its RX 7000 series. With NVIDIA soon launching its RTX 4060, 4070 SKUs, it makes sense to further go into detail for the specifications and updated performance targets of the RDNA 3-based low and mid-range offerings. We'll also briefly touch on some updates to the Vcache refresh for the RX 7900 series, as there seems to be some evidence that at one point or another it was planned. And we're going to get into all of this after this message from the video's sponsor. So before even the 7900 series launched, there were lots of rumours that N31 would actually feature Vcached stack variants. Basically, the MCDs of the GPU had TSVs with the uh, extra infinity cache essentially sitting straight on top, doubling the amount from 96 to 192 megabytes. Astronomics was the first to point this out, and it was when myself, Astronomics, and a couple of others were first leaking details such as the single MCD. And this was back when myself, Astronomics, and a couple of others were leaking details such as the single GCD. But obviously, those products didn't launch it, but there does seem to be some evidence that at one point or another, they were actually planned. Tom Wasik has actually done some investigations. Basically, they took a 7900 XT, and because it has an MCD removed, it allows you to kind of get a better insight into the board itself. Turns out the sixth site has a blank piece of SI, and you can visualize the RDL fanout wiring beneath that site pretty clearly in infrared. You can also see a linear array of spots that look remarkably like the keepout zones on X3D, and they're the same pitch. Could they be considering stacked MCD functionality, or maybe they're coming from something else? Now, there is no new details here. Ultimately, this is not confirmation these products are going to launch. I still think that N31's refresh is probably dead, due to basically AMD just not feeling like it's necessary, instead focusing their engineering efforts onto APUs and RDNA 4. But it's quite interesting anyway that at the very least this was considered, and may indicate that this would come for future products such as, for example, RDNA 4. Who knows? Now let's switch to N32 and N33. Now, ultimately, the success of these products isn't just going to be down to the performance, although we'll touch on that in a second, as well as the specs, but instead the pricing. To give you an idea, the 4070, which we recently leaked box photos for, is apparently going to be 400, sorry, 599 to 649 US dollars with its current pricing target. This could change, of course, before launch, but that's what I've heard at the moment, with the performance being roughly that of a 3080 to 3080 Ti, depending on raster or ray tracing. So that's something to bear in mind as we discuss AMD's strategy going forward. So I won't read out all of these specifications because there are just so many of them and it'll get kind of dry, but I'll touch on some interesting ones. Now the compute unit count for the 7800 XT is 60, with up to 2.8 gigahertz for its boost, 16 gigabytes of memory, 20 GPPS, with infinity cache of 64 megabytes, with a TBP of 280 watts. The 7700 XT cuts things down, 48 compute units, 12 gigs of memory, 48 megabytes of infinity cache, 225 watts. Now, the drivers are still a work in progress, and there is some possibility we could see a little bit of additional clock frequency on the GPU core with final retail silicon. But let's face it, guys, at this stage, it's not exactly like they're going to treble the clock speed or something ridiculous. I mean, obviously, I'm just exaggerating here. But we're going to not see like massive increases, at least in the hardware side of things. The software, we may see some optimizations for the drivers, which could help, but Right now, the performance seems to be roughly that of um, for the uh, 60, uh, sorry, for the 7800 XT, it's basically the 6950 XT, so it's slower than the 4070 Ti, and the 7700 XT is about the, on par with the 6800. I've also heard that the 54 compute unit variant is dead. So that does not seem to be happening. As for the N33, again, I'm not going to read out all of these specifications because some of these have already been known. 32 compute units up to 2.8 gigahertz, 8 gigabytes of memory on a 128-bit bus. This is a mono die with 32 megabytes of infinity cache, 180 watt TBP. And for the 7628 compute units up to 2.6 gigahertz, 8 gigs of memory again, although the clock frequency is a little slower. So it's 16 rather than 18 GBPS. And the power consumption is just 140 watts. Again, the drivers are work in progress, and you can see the performance targets yourself. I have also heard that AMD are really locking down the power limits of these cards, especially the N32 ones. This is basically so you can't just overclock them to the stratosphere and start getting close to, let's say, N31. So I don't know how AMD are going to do here versus NVIDIA. I think it's going to be all down to pricing as well as release timing. 
I think AMD are probably going to launch later. There are some rumors, not for myself, but I have heard, you know, through the grapevine that we're going to see like March, possibly April for the launch of the RTX 4070 and stuff. And again, we have seen the box photos, which I leaked. There have already been some uh, reports online regarding the clock frequency of these GPUs. So I wouldn't be surprised if they do launch, you know, late February, March, possibly April at the very latest. We know they're coming for the 4070. We know, of course, we've already seen filings for the 4060 and so on and so on. And the question is, can AMD compete? And honestly, at this stage, it's going to be down to the pricing. I think AMD needs to be a lot more aggressive with the pricing. My personal opinion is that if the card can't outperform something like a 4070, it's going to have to be considerably cheaper, obviously. Um, I think a lot of the problems that AMD have had right now is honestly public perception. And it's going to be very interesting to see how they can fix this. I don't think there is anything inherently wrong, though, with AMD not being as fast as NVIDIA. Ultimately, the mid-range and whatever else still sells a crap ton of cards. I feel AMD's strategy going forward is going to be a GPU which appeals to a lot of folks, basically mid-range, possibly a little higher, and of course lots of APUs. But NVIDIA will probably take the high end, at least for the conceivable future, even if the rumors that I've heard for RDNA 4 are right and it's twice as fast as RDNA 3. Look how fast RTX 4090 Ti is allegedly. It's like 20% faster than the 4090. So that means that the AMD have a lot of ground to make up. I'll talk more about this in another, in another video, excuse me, because this one's already getting kind of long. But... Yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see how all of this turns out, especially given Intel themselves with Battle Mage. I've heard it's going to be around RTX 4080 levels of performance. They do not launch until next year. The rumor is it's going to be Q1, late Q1, excuse me, early Q2 for the launch of Battle Mage, depending. If that's true, they actually have a decent amount of time before NVIDIA launches RTX 50 and AMD launches RDNA 4. Um... But of course, it's going to be still them on the back foot versus, let's say, RTX 50. And it's going to be Celestial onwards that Intel really able to compete. So it's going to be a very interesting scenario. Anyway, I think that's just about it for this particular video. Hopefully, you have enjoyed it. It's YouTube. So if you did, you know what to do. Leave a like on the video and uh, take care of yourselves. Stay safe. Bye for now.